Shown here is a human diploid cell, with all the organelles apart from the nucleus emitted. The term diploid just means a normal body cell, i.e. not a gamete. This could be a skin cell, a blood cell, a nerve cell, anything, as long as it is not a gamete, so not a sperm or egg cell. Let's take a closer look at the nucleus. This is the nuclear membrane. Inside we have a dense area called the nucleolus. This is first of all the site of RNA synthesis, but also where all the DNA is wound up together. We should note that this diagram shows the nucleus during the G1 phase of the cell cycle. This means that the cell is not yet preparing to undergo division. The cell is just going through simple everyday processes, for example protein synthesis. If we have a look at the nucleus during S phase, we'll notice that all of the DNA has duplicated, like this. The cell is now preparing for division. This means that all the DNA needs to replicate, and then it is checked for errors. This is the G2 checkpoint. This checkpoint is passed, and now the cell is ready to go through mitosis. As mitosis is about to happen, all of this lump, let's say, of DNA condenses down into units called chromosomes, like this. Notice how the animation shows the DNA condensing only into two chromosomes. Obviously this happens to all of them. And shown here now are all the chromosomes. The cell is now about to go through mitosis. Let's now have a look at one chromosome in detail to explain all these terms. So here is a chromosome. The definition of a chromosome is a molecule of DNA. That is quite simply it. So shown here is DNA, very tightly wound up. If we have a look at one section of this chromosome here, for example, we will see that we have DNA here which is wound up on proteins called histones. DNA has to wind up on these histone proteins so that it can fit in the nucleus. Otherwise, the DNA is just too long, it will take up too much space in the nucleus. Therefore, it has to be condensed and wound over these histone proteins. The collective name for the material of DNA plus histone proteins is called chromatin. This is just the name of the material. This is just what we refer to as DNA plus these proteins. A structure formed of chromatin that contains one full DNA molecule is called a chromosome. So just to clarify, here is our molecule of DNA. It winds up on these histone proteins. This area here is referred to as a nucleosome. Successive nucleosomes, as you can see, wind together, eventually forming a chromosome. Chromatin is just the name for the material of protein plus DNA. Chromosome is the full structure where we have one full molecule of DNA. Let's now rewind back to the G1 stage and take a closer look at what all of these terms mean. So G1 is the stage before replication. The cell is nowhere near dividing yet. Shown here is one chromosome. This is one full DNA molecule. We also say that this is one chromatid. So the structure here, one full molecule of DNA before replication can be referred to as both one chromosome and one chromatid. In other words, the definition of a chromosome before replication is one chromatid. When DNA replicates, and this is a very specific process, do check out our other video on DNA replication if you're not sure, then we have two of these chromosomes here. As you can see, they are fully identical, absolutely identical. One is a clone of the other. We still, however, refer to this as one chromosome. This time, though, we have two chromatids. Really, the word duplicated is missing in this term here. This structure here is really one duplicated chromosome, but scientists still refer to it just as a chromosome. Both of these structures here have the same name, and this is where the confusion arises. I agree, it would be much better to use a different term here. Nevertheless, this is what scientists use. This is a chromosome, and so is this. This one is just duplicated. That's the difference. To highlight that it's duplicated, we can say that this chromosome here contains two chromatids. In other words, you can think of chromatids as sticks. Here's one stick. One stick before replication is also a chromosome. Two sticks together, so after the stick initially has been replicated, is called a chromosome as well. Since these two chromatids, these two sticks, are completely identical, we call them sister chromatids. Sister chromatids just mean that the two chromatids forming one chromosome are completely and utterly identical. There is no difference at all. Unless there has been an error in DNA replication, which is very rare, 
these two chromatids are the same. Some more information. A human diploid cell, so remember this is a normal body cell, not a gamete, not a sex cell, it contains 46 chromosomes. In other words, 46 chromatids, 46 sticks on their own. 23 of them are maternal, they came from the mother. The other 23 of them are paternal, they came from the father. This is the case in every single diploid cell in the body. If you're wondering how chromosomes from the mother and father ended up in every single cell of the body, well think about it. At GCSE we learnt about meiosis. We know that meiosis produces gametes. Gametes fuse during fertilisation. That forms a zygote. The zygote then develops into the organism. However, we know that let's say if this is a human zygote, it must have 46 chromosomes. If the zygote is formed from two cells, from the two gametes, from the sperm and the egg, it still has to have 46. It can't have 92, it must have 46. Therefore, half has to come from one gamete and half from the other. So there will be 23 from the male gamete and 23 from the female gamete, 46 in total in the zygote. The zygote then replicates, forming the embryo, stem cells, and eventually that develops into the organism. If the zygote containing 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother and 23 from the father, duplicates, it will be exactly the same. The product will be absolutely identical. If that then duplicates, the product of that will also be identical. In other words, every cell in our organism, apart from gametes, all have copies of the original 23 chromosomes given by the mother and the other 23 from the father. Each maternal chromosome has a corresponding partner chromosome, which is paternal. So we have 23 maternal chromosomes. Each of them will have their own partner, which comes from the father. Two chromosomes associate together, which correspond to each other. Those two chromosomes will be identical to each other in relation to the genes. Alleles might be different, yes, but the genes are the same. Remember that an allele is just a different version of a gene. Let me explain what this means. The gene that codes for your height, for example, will be found only on one chromosome and on no other. Only on one. And it will be found in a very specific place on that chromosome. Remember that a gene is a section of a DNA. So we need to find this section of a DNA. This section of the DNA will also be in a very specific fixed place on the chromosome. On the maternal chromosome, the gene that codes for height will be in a very specific place. On the paternal chromosome, the gene that also codes for height will be in the exact same position. These two chromosomes that we're talking about now, they are identical because they both carry the same gene. It doesn't matter if the mother's chromosome says that you're going to be tall and the father's chromosome says that you're going to be short, they both code for height. Yes, the alleles are different, tall and short, that's what we mean by allele, but the gene height is still the same, and it is in exactly the same position. This means that they are identical. They will also be the same size and length, because they're going to code for the same amount of genes, because each chromosome in this pair will be the same length, it will have the same amount of genes, and therefore it codes for the same amount of genetic information. We therefore refer to these chromosomes as homologous. Homologous chromosomes are two pairs of chromosomes that are exactly identical because they carry the same genes, even if the alleles are different. So let's have a look at the chromosomes before replication again. We will have 23 of these and 23 of these. These are from the father, these are from the mother. In total, we have 46. This is one chromatid and this is one chromatid. Remember that before replication, one chromosome is one chromatid. So this is a chromosome and this is a chromosome. Let's say that we're talking again about the gene for height. If that gene happens to be here, well then on the mother's chromosome the gene will also be in the same position. And because it is these two chromosomes which have the gene for height, and no other chromosomes at all will have the gene for height, we call them homologous. This is a pair of homologous chromosomes. After replication, you know that now we have two sticks, two chromatids here and two chromatids here. However, we still refer to this as one chromosome and this as one chromosome. We're just missing the word duplicated here. Scientists just omit that word. We still call it one chromosome. Because these two structures here are still both chromosomes and they're just copied versions of the ones before replication, they will still have the same genes. This time there will be four genes, not two. 
they are still a pair of homologous chromosomes. This is a chromosome and this is a chromosome. Because they both have the gene for height, they are homologous. When we talk about cell division, specifically meiosis, we refer to a pair of homologous chromosomes, or four chromatids in total, as a bivalent. A bivalent is a pair of homologous chromosomes, or four chromatids. Let's have a look at the nucleus again. So during G1, in the growth phase, when the cell is not yet preparing for replication, of course, all of the genetic material, all of the DNA, is clumped into one large ball, the nucleolus. Just for ease of understanding, I'm going to show you all of the chromosomes. Just remember that in reality, all of these chromosomes aren't condensed, they're just in one ball in one lump. We have 46 chromosomes here. If you don't believe me, you can count. So 46 sticks. You can also see that there are 23 pairs of sticks. In each pair, one is blue, one is pink. One is from the father, one is from the mother. We have 23 of these pairs. Each of these pairs is homologous because in each pair, the gene is found in the same position on one chromosome and on the other. There are also 46 chromatids. There are 46 sticks. Again, you can count to confirm. Now let's have a look at the nucleus when it's preparing for division. In other words, during prophase of mitosis. We can see that everything has been replicated since DNA replication has already taken place. This means we have 92 chromosomes, 92 sticks, or in other words, arms of a chromosome. You can also count that there are 46 pairs of duplicated chromosomes. Each of those pairs will be homologous. The position of a gene is also referred to as the locus, plural loci. So the locus is the fixed position of a gene on a chromosome. If the loci of a gene are the same on one chromatid and on the other, that is a pair of unduplicated homologous chromosomes. If the loci of a gene on one duplicated chromosome are the same as the loci of the same gene on a different duplicated chromosome, these two duplicated chromosomes, in other words, these four chromatids, all together are homologous. They form a bivalent. Overall, you can count in the diagram we have 92 chromatids, 92 sticks, 92 arms, whatever you like. This data table here proves everything we've mentioned today. As you can see, in a human diploid cell, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. If we look on the genes column, we can see that each chromosome has a different number of genes, so it will be of different lengths. If we have a look at chromosome 1 that has 2,000 genes, its homologous chromosome will also have 2,000 genes and no other number, only 2,000. If we look at chromosome number 8, 700, this for example could be the chromosome from the mother. The chromosome from the father will also have 700 genes. No more, no less, because they are homologous. You can study this table more if you are interested. If you have any questions, comments, queries or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing. See you next time. Goodbye.